This isn't the type of machine I'm, I'm used to reviewing, but it's still interesting nonetheless. This is the Lenovo Yoga 9i, the shadow black model, featuring Intel's new Evo line of CPUs. Specifically, this one has the 1185G7. Now, I reviewed the Razer Blade Stealth with the 1165G7 recently. The video will be up in the cards above if you want to check this out, but these are slightly different use cases. This is for the, the gamer on the go, whereas this is more for artists, creative professionals, I suppose, or people who just want an incredibly versatile laptop for whatever situation, whatever input they want to give it. Now, Intel's Evo line of CPUs, for those of you who don't know, are their new sort of branding for their ultra low power CPUs, the ones that go in ultra thin, ultra light notebooks like this. Now, Intel are the ones who actually sent me this laptop to check out, and they even sent it in a very fancy box with basically a display playing an ad on it. It's This is kind of new for me. I don't normally get press samples from, you know, someone like Intel or whatever directly, and so uh, these sorts of, well, unique additions to the product, as opposed to just a normal box, are kind of fun to see. But either way, um, Intel's new Evo line of CPUs, like I said, are their sort of new low power chips. Uh, that's the 11th generation, and what they they gave me a, a press sheet along with the fancy box to explain what was you know special about these chips. And there's one line that got me, which is the Intel Evo platform is based on our extensive research into the pain points and unmet needs of different users across various devices. Which, if you translate that into human readable, means that it's a new series of chips that are faster, as you'd kind of expect from a new series of CPUs. It has faster integrated graphics, apparently two times faster than last gen, and has things like Wi-Fi 6 and instant wake, which, again, you'd kind of expect for a, a new line of CPUs coming out in, well, 2020, 2021. Anyway, the Yoga 9i, not to be confused with i9, is rocking, like I said, the i7 1185G7. Also has 16 gigabytes of soldered DDR4, 4266 megahertz as well, and it has an M.2 512 uh, gig SSD, as well as using the integrated Iris Xe graphics, and a 4K touchscreen that is utterly stunning. It covers 90% of the DCI-P3 spectrum and has a peak brightness of 500 nits, which is more than enough for basically any application. As for the touchscreen, it is a proper multi-touch and stylus uh, pressure sensitive display with a stylus built into the laptop that you can pull out and draw on it to your heart's content. Of course, being a yoga device means that it can bend over, well, backwards, and act just uh, like a, a normal tablet, albeit with the keyboard on the back instead of the nice sort of faux or potentially even real leather on the back of the display. Now, if you're wondering what sort of creative workloads this can handle and the incredibly thin hardware, well, I ran some creative benchmarks, so let's take a look at those. Starting with Cinebench and the single thread results, you can see the 1185G7 in the Yoga really can't keep up with even the 1165G7 that was in the Blade Stealth. It does a good job against the 9750H that was in the Blade Studio, although that result was a little interesting. And when it comes to multi-threaded, you can see how heavily this thing gets thermal throttled, as the 85 is meant to be a faster chip than the 65, and yet performs or offers less than half the all-core performance. That's shown very well in the Blender BMW render, where, yeah, it's over uh, double the time of the 1165G7 in that Blade uh, Stealth, which already pales in comparison to the faster desktop chips. That's even, even more clear in the Gooseberry test, where it's again over double the amount of time for the 1185G7 in the Yoga versus the 1165G7 in the Blade Stealth. When it comes to the Premiere render, it didn't do too badly. It's a 10 minute test render and it still did do a uh, render in under 10 minutes, but compared to the other chips that I've tested, unfortunately I don't have data for the 1165G7, but again, it kind of pales in comparison. As you saw, this laptop being so insanely thin means that the 1185G7 that's in there really doesn't get cooled anywhere near enough to give a good amount of performance. 
The Razorblade Stealth, which in theory has the slower 1165G7, has a lot more room for cooling and can actually, well, keep the CPU at least relatively cool. This thing hit 100 degrees Celsius and thermal throttled through the ground, which means that despite this having the higher end CPU, the Blade Stealth was pretty much consistently twice as fast as this one. And that's kind of a big deal considering that overall thickness of the two machines isn't all that different. The Yoga has enough power to get you through a basic Premiere edit or do some photo editing in Photoshop or some, well, illustration in Illustrator, but it's, it's not a powerhouse of a machine as you'd kind of expect. And for the two of you in the audience who are wondering, you can technically game on this, the, the Intel integrated graphics are better than last gen, but you're only going to be gaming at CSGO and low settings. So it's not exactly the most powerful machine on the planet, but it's not really meant to be. The fact that it has a folding touchscreen display and a stylus built into the laptop shows you that it's more about being able to capture your inputs in however you want to give them than being a portable powerhouse. Speaking of the stylus, sadly there aren't any you know, good drawing apps pre-installed, but since I have a Creative Cloud subscription, I installed Adobe Fresco and got to drawing. Now it turns out, as I kind of expected, I'm terrible at drawing, so over the Christmas break, uh, I gave it to friends and family to try out instead. And they found it incredibly easy to use. The fact that it has touch sensitivity, or I suppose pressure sensitivity with the stylus, means that you can be delicate in drawing lines, but hard in shading areas or whatever else, and it gives a very easy to use experience. It also feels incredibly premium in the hand and feels very good to either just write notes on or to you know come up with drawings or whatever else. One other thing I want to highlight there is that on my extra short Christmas break, I took the yoga with me and deliberately didn't bring the 65 watt USB-C charger because I kind of wanted to see how well the battery life would do and well, it lasted the entire, well, single overnight stay. We did use it a fair amount for drawing and for watching videos and that sort of thing, and Lenovo reckons with this spec, this specific model, you'll get around 10 hours of usage from the 60 watt hour battery, and in my testing, that's pretty spot on. I came home with over 60% battery, and while I didn't use it, you know, 24 seven, I used it enough that if it was, you know, a gaming laptop, that would have been dead long before. As for the other input methods, the keyboard is fine. I used it to write the script and I found it fairly easy to get used to, although the spacing feels a little weird. This specific one is a US model, which again, takes a bit of extra time for my UK based you know, muscle memory to get used to. And the keys feel incredibly light. Uh, which meant that I, I mistyped a lot of stuff and also the key travel is, is pretty minimal. So you will get used to it. It's certainly not bad, but well, it's not my personal favorite. The trackpad also felt just a little bit weird. The actual trackpad surface doesn't move independent of the body. And so it feels more like they've got a, a vibration or a haptic motor um, under the trackpad to, to give you that tactile click and feel, which feels a little bit strange. With that said, because you have such a nice touchscreen on here, you don't really end up using the trackpad all that much, except for when you want to do precision moves or two finger scrolling, although you can do that on the screen anyway. Speaking of the display, it's beautiful. This 4K display is incredibly crisp. It's also incredibly bright and vibrant. Colors look fantastic and look true to life enough that you'd be happy to you know, edit some photos or whatever if you need to. And I think you'd have a very nice time using this. Most of the time with these sorts of displays, I don't really care for uh, having something this small and at 4K, but the crispness, the, the, the retina quality of this well, it just feels fantastic. And sitting on top of the display is the built-in webcam. It does have a nice feature, which is a manual privacy cover, which not only physically covers the camera, but also disconnects it from the PC, which is a really nice touch, considering that this is the sort of laptop that's thin and light enough that you could literally have with you 24 seven and not really worry about it. In terms of the quality, it's, it's okay. You can have a look yourself. The quality is, Fine. It does a decent enough job. It's certainly usable for video calls or whatever else you need to do, but I still don't really understand why, especially on a premium device like this, we're not seeing smartphone type sensors 
in these sorts of laptops. I can't imagine they would be much more expensive, but the quality would be drastically better, you know, at least 1080p minimum instead of 720p, but it's fine. Also, the microphone is pretty decent too. And as for the speakers, well, they sound fantastic. They're truly incredible to, to listen to, and they're built into the sort of a part of the hinge, the, the piece that would be forward facing when you have a laptop in the standard clamshell mode, or I guess probably bottom firing, depending on how you're holding it. And they, found, they sound fantastic. They're incredibly clear, they're pretty rich in sound, they're not too bass heavy or too tinny, and while they're no replacement for a good set of headphones or speakers, they're certainly the best built-in speakers I've heard. And if you're wondering what else you could plug into this, well the answer is not much. As with most of these ultra-light, ultra-portable machines and ultra-thin, there really isn't much room or, I guess, appetite to put too many ports on these, so on this you have a USB Type-A port, two USB Type-C ports, and a 3.5mm 4-pole headphone jack. And that's about it. That is more than you get on a lot of the new MacBooks, for example, and the fact that it does actually have a Type-A port is really nice to see, to be able to plug in the non, you know, Type-C accessories and not have to carry a dongle 24-7, but you will probably want to have one around if you do want to use this as a, a regular machine, especially if you want to plug it into anything other than just power and maybe a USB stick. I think the only catch with this laptop is its price. It's £1,800 even with an e-coupon right now, and that's quite a lot. Now, admittedly, if you compare it to its competition, things like the Dell XPS 13 2-in-1, well, that's about £15 more for technically the slower 1165G7, although, like I said, because of how thermally constrained this is, that doesn't really matter. You could compare it to the Razer Book 13, which is, I suppose, the direct competitor from Razer, although it doesn't fold over completely, but that's about £100 more, or you could get the Blade Stealth, which does have a dedicated graphics card that you can definitely game on and definitely has more, well, less thermally constrained CPUs, but that's about £110 more as well, and again, doesn't fold over completely or come with a stylus. And of course, Apple doesn't offer anything as a direct competitor to this. You could technically get an iPad or iPad Pro with the pencil and a touch case or whatever, but uh, well, it's not quite the same. I think for the market that this is intended for, this is a very nice option. Yes, it is a very premium price, but it also is an incredibly premium device. It feels incredibly well built in the hands, it feels, well, premium if nothing else. The stylus is fantastic, the fact that it's integrated as opposed to just hanging off the side is a really nice touch. The overall usage experience makes me feel that this would be a very good office or artist laptop or just a, a daily driver for you to literally keep with you 24-7, not have to worry about things like the battery life and be able to do a little bit of everything on it whenever you want. If you can't tell, it's not quite for me. I'm not the, the target market for this. I would much rather have a gaming laptop with more CPU and GPU horsepower, more upgradability, and I don't mind that it's not a fold over a tablet touchscreen with a stylus. I don't mind too much, but I'm certainly starting to like this a lot more than I, I guess I thought I would anyway. Now with that said, I would love to hear your thoughts in the comments down below. What do you think of the Yoga 9i? What do you think of Intel's new Evo line of CPUs? And anything else, feel free to let me know in those comments down below. Now if you want to check out the Lenovo Yoga 9i yourself, or maybe check out pricing when and where you watch this, or hey, pick one up, then I'm going to leave a link to it in the description down below. There's a good chance it's going to be an Amazon affiliate link that will take you to a local Amazon store where you can see pricing when and where you watch this, so feel free to check that out. And feel free to check out the rest of the links in the description if you want to support the channel and keep me making these videos on a Monday, Wednesday, Friday basis. There's stuff like Amazon and Overclock UK affiliate links to be buying from there. There's merch or hoodies or t-shirts like this one. There's Patreon if you want to get access to cool rewards like our Money Men Discord chat or sponsor free videos and a load of other different things down there too. Of course, you can hit that subscribe button for more videos like this one and check out some more reviews over there as well. I'll leave the Razer Blade Stealth video as that's probably the, the closest comparable thing that I've reviewed in the last five years. So feel free to check that one out. Otherwise, thanks for watching. If you have any questions, feel free to leave those in the comments down below. We'll see you all in the next video.